Okay, let's have a little think about this first. This says the time in seconds for 40 runners running 100 metres are shown in the two ordered stem and leaf diagrams below. And you can see them there. We've got male runners and we've got our stem and leaf diagram. And then we have female runners and a separate stem and leaf diagram. So my question is, how else could we show this information on a stem and leaf diagram? So not using something like a bar chart or a pie chart or anything like that, not a different diagram. How could we show this differently, but still using a stem and leaf diagram? So you can pause the video if you want to have a little think about it and see if you can come up with the answer. But I'm going to discuss it now. So just like we have like single bar charts and your normal bar charts, we do have things called dual bar charts. So we might have two bars drawn side by side or we can have them drawn on top of each other and we would colour code the different bars to represent male and female or whatever our two categories might be. Sometimes we can have three or four categories on bar charts. Now for stem and leaf diagrams, we can do something similar. It basically means instead of having two separate stem and leaf diagrams, which are showing virtually the same information, it's all about runners running 100 metres. Instead of having it two separate ones, we put it all together, but we split the male and female. And the way we do this on a stem and leaf diagram is to draw it like this. So this is called a back to back stem and leaf diagram. So you can see I've got my stem part of my stem and leaf diagram here in the middle. I've drawn the female out onto the right. So you can see there I've got the female um, runners times there. And then the male are drawn out towards the left. So this is why it's called back to back stem and leaf diagram. So what do we notice about a back to back stem and leaf diagram that's different to a normal stem and leaf diagram? Well, first off, our stem is in the middle here and they share this stem, our male and female runners. They are still written in order. So the female, you can see quite clearly, is just like a regular stem and leaf diagram in order. But the male runners, they're still in order, but it almost looks as though they are backwards. The point is that the smallest leaves go closest to the stem. So here we can see this is 12.3 seconds and this is 12.5 and 12.5. So the smallest are on the inside and then the largest go out towards the ends. So just beware on this side of the stem and leaf diagram, it almost seems as if they are backwards. And then the other key, key thing we've got is that they are labelled each side. So we have to label that this side of the back to back stem and leaf diagram is our male runners and this side is the female. And then finally, if you look down at the bottom here, we have two separate keys. We have a key for the right hand side, which is just like we had before. So um, 14 line 7 means 14.7 seconds. But we need to have a separate key for the left hand side because it's almost in reverse. On this side, 7 line 14 would mean 14.7 seconds. OK, so you need two separate keys. They don't have to show the same time. Mine do. I chose 14.7 seconds for each one as long as they are showing what is happening. So this one is just showing that the reverse um, is true of what it is on this side. So this is your key information. It's basically what I've just said. So a back to back stem and leaf diagram should always have each side labeled with what information it is showing. It should have a key on each side. It should have the data in order and have the lowest leaves closest to the stem. So the data is in order. It's just that the left hand side of the stem and leaf diagram almost seems to be in reverse, but it's not. It's that the lowest leaves go closest to the stem in the centre. OK, so I'm going to go through an example with you now. This says the speeds in miles per hour for cars on two different roads are shown in the ordered back to back stem and leaf diagram below. So this is the stem and leaf diagram. You can see I've got road A and these are the speeds that were recorded on road A and then road B and these are the speeds on road B and my two keys at the bottom. 
So my first question is, what was the highest speed recorded on either road? So on these questions, just pay attention if they are asking you about the entire stem and leaf diagram or if they're asking you to look specifically at either the left or the right hand side of it. So this is on either road. So we're looking at the entire stem and leaf diagram here. So the highest speed, well, looking at our stems first, these are 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s are going to be the largest. And that down here at the bottom, I've only got one answer in the 50s. I've got 50. So 50 miles an hour is the largest speed, the highest speed that was recorded. Again, just be aware that this here, we're reading it correctly, does not represent 92. This is 29. So just be careful there. This stem in the middle is my 10 units in this example. So 50 is the highest speed recorded. A question B, what is the range of speeds recorded on road A? So this time I'm specifically looking at just road A. So this side of the stem and leaf diagram. So range is the highest value, take away the lowest value. So the highest value is 50. The lowest value is 29. So 50 subtract 29 is 21 miles an hour for the range. Obviously, range on road B, we would do 35 subtract 23, which is 22. And if the question was, what was the range of all the speeds on both roads? It would have been 50 subtract 23. OK, so 27. Question C, what is the median of speeds recorded on road A? So again, I'm looking at road A here and we need to work out the medium. And there's two ways we can do this um, and it's just like we would do if they were written in a list. So the first way, if we have a list of data that this is already in order for us, we put it in order and then one way of doing it is to cross off the highest and lowest data until you reach the centre. So it's the same thing on here and it's just like you would have done with a normal stem and leaf diagram cross them off in pairs till we reach the centre. So the highest and lowest first is 29 and 50. Now be careful once you get to a new um, row, the next lowest value here is 30. It's not 39. And the next highest value is going to be 46. So just take care when you enter a new row that you're crossing off from the right direction. So we're going like that and then crossing them off in pairs. Next one, next one, another pair and another one. And then we can see we've only got one left, which is here. So this is 39 miles an hour. So that's one way of finding the median. The next way is instead of crossing them off in pairs is to determine which value is the median. So if we count here, we're just looking at road A, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 data points. And a way of quickly identifying which one is the median is if we add 1 to 15 and get 16 and then half 16 to get 8, that will tell us that the 8th data value is the median. So the eighth number in the list is the median. So I can count up now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is the eighth data value on the road A. So that is the median. So just a different way of doing it. Obviously for road B, you can do the same thing. You can either cross them off highest to lowest. So starting at 23 and 35 until you get into the middle or the quicker way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So again, there's 15 data points on this side. So eighth value is gonna be the median again. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it would be 28. 
So here's one for you to try. This is the marks gained by class A and class B in the same maths test are shown in the ordered back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram below. So we have class A here on the left and class B on the right and our two keys at the bottom. So I've got a few different questions for you. The first one is, what was the lowest test score achieved by either class? What was the range of marks in class A? Which class had the higher median score? And then question D, which I haven't shown you how to do, but I want to see if you can work it out yourself, is what was the mean score of class B? And for this, you'll need to give your answer to one decimal place. So you'll def definitely need a calculator for this question. So pause the video, have a go at these four questions and then unpause it and I'll go through all the answers. Okay, the answers then. So part A, what was the lowest test score achieved by either class? So we're looking at the entire diagram this time. So class A's lowest score was 32 and class B was 35. So the lowest was 32. The range in class A, so the highest in class A was 57 and the lowest was 32. So 57 subtract 32 is 25 marks. Which class had the higher median score? So we need to find the median of both classes and then see which is the highest. So in class A, we can see there are 12 uh, students, 12 data values. So 12 add one is 13 and 13 divided by two is 6.5. So what this means is that the median is in between the 6th and 7th data point. So I'm going to count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So this is 6 and 7 here. So that's 46 and 48. So in between 46 and 48 is 47. Now you can do the crossing off method if you want. I've just shown you the slightly quicker way of doing it. I think the second method is a bit quicker. So for class B, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 students in class B. So 11 add 1 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So the sixth data value is going to be the median. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that is 43. So which class had the highest median? Well, class A. So on average, class A did better. And finally, D, what was the mean score of class B? You're going to need a calculator for this. The key point here is not to forget that you have these stems. So we should be doing 35, add 37, add 39, add 42, add 42, add 43, add 48, add 48, add 51, add 51, add 55. Once we've got that total, we're going to divide that by um, 11 because there are 11 students in class B. So we get 44.6 when we round to one decimal place. And that, just check your answer makes sense with that. So 44.6 looks like it does make sense for class B because most of their scores were in the 40s. So 44.6 sounds like a good mean. Thank you for watching my lesson. I'm Mrs. Jagger. If you've liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up below and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching.